In this tutorial, I'll show you how to use InDesign for doing layout for design documentation or reports. And what I'll go over is how to work in InDesign with facing pages, first creating a document, of course, then working with spreads, um, preferences, master pages, create grid, create page numbers, paragraph styles, text boxes, placing images and graphics, uh, creating a table of context and also creating clickable web links or interactive PDFs and then exporting uh, the PDF. So let's get started in InDesign and I'll open up my program. I will choose create new. I will call it report and I will choose the A4 format. Here, yeah, I can choose between if I want it to be a portrait or a landscape, I'll choose the landscape. And you can also select facing pages and in that way you'll have left and right pages throughout your document. And to begin with, you can see that you just have one single page here. But if you, in the pages panel to the right hand side, you can see that I have the small uh, view of the page or preview of the page here. And there you can create new pages, you can change the page size, and you can also delete pages. But I'll just create a couple of new pages to show you that uh, I have left and right hand side pages because I choose to have facing pages. We often work with facing pages in InDesign because InDesign is made for layouting um, magazines and books. But in this case, where we are doing a digital or online documentation report, we don't need facing pages. So I'll just go back into file and document setup and then unclick or uncheck the facing pages. And then I just have a one page layout. I can also select several pages by holding down shift in the pages panel and then delete them. So far, so good. I'm just going to save my report. And uh, what I'm going to work with or show you first is um, something about the preferences um, because we want to change the preferences a little bit. So what you do is you go to just to InDesign and then under preferences, we have something called units and increments. And uh, there you can see that I have the possibility to uh, choose a page and instead of pixels, I set it to millimeters and that's because I'm working with a, an A4 document. So I need actually to be able to know how many millimeters strokes and elements or components are wide or high. So I choose millimeters, then I go to the dictionary. And here you can choose what language you're, you, you're working in. And this has nothing to do with the language that you use as a designer. It has to do with the language that the text that you're implementing in the InDesign document has. So if the text is Hungarian or the text is Danish, you should set this to Danish because this deals with how InDesign are breaking the words into two. Um, and that should be the correct places and, and, um, and InDesign can actually calculate on that. But since I'm working in English now, I'll let it stay here in English UK. I will also go to autocorrect and do the same. So I'll set autocorrect also um, to the language that I um, that I'm working with. And I'll just enable the autocorrect right now because the text that I have um is uh, not a proper text so that was a little bit about the preferences the next thing um, i'm going to show you is how to work with master pages so you can see up here in my pages panel that i have three pages but up over the fold i also have something called an a master and an a master is some sort of a template page for the whole document and I can just put like any kind of graphical element here um, like this and you'll see on the rest of the pages that it is not going through and that's probably because um, 
I have a one-page layout. So if I put it to the left-hand side, you can see that now um, I have this square on all pages. And actually, because I'm working on a one-page layout, I want to delete one of my master pages. So I just select the left one, and then I click the bin, and then I just delete my master, uh, my left master page. And still, if I then work on this master page, you can see the one that's left. You can probably see that now this is the master page for the rest of the pages. What I want to start with is actually creating a grid on my master page because whenever I'm filling in text or images or graphics down here in my document, I can follow the grids and then get a more like tight um, layout on in my report. So I'll double click my A master and I'll go to layout, margins and columns. I'll set my margins to 10 millimeters. If I want a wider, for example, top than the bottom, I have to unclick the link, the link icon here so that the dimensions or proportions are not linked together. And this is okay, I think. Um, actually, I still need to go into layout margins and columns and actually, or um, yeah, columns and then make some columns down here. And I'm in this case, I'm selecting or creating four columns and I'm choosing a gutter of five. And now you can see I have this grid that I can work with on all my pages. I can, for example, select the rectangle frame tool and drag a rectangle. I can press Command and D and place an image by selecting it and opening it. And uh, it fills into my um, frame, my, my image frame here. You can see that I can drag the frame up and down. To be able to fill out the frame, I click up here in the fill frame proportionally or fill frame, uh, fill content proportionally. And there you can see that it will fill out my frame. Whenever I have some image of some sort, I can change the layout and then just let the text run around the image. For example, maybe I want an image up here and text around. Maybe I want the image down and being much smaller like this and have several images that are running through the report like this instead or however I want it to be. But now I have a grid to work to work with. If I need another grid, um, if I don't think this is enough, I can create several grids and I can do that by creating or clicking or selecting my A master again and then just dragging it down into a new item or new page. And then I'll have another master, a B master. And that B master, I can then again go to margins and columns and say, okay, actually it could be interesting for me to also work with a three column grid like this so that I push um, the side and just have a little text on the side, for example, or a lot of text and little icons or images on the side. So if I just stand here on the one page here, and since I have B master selected, then I will create a B master now. The next thing I want to show you is to how, how to create page numbers. And again, you go to the A master. Um, Right now, I don't need a B master, so I'll just delete the B master. Um, this is enough with the A master. Um, I will go and um, make another text box down here. And I will choose the cursor, the type tool, and click in the middle of the box and write an A, capital A. And I'll just choose um, a font that I find is interesting. And I will also choose a line center. And that's because in this case, I just have one page and I think that would fit my purpose, aligning in center. So far, so good. Now I just have an A on all the pages and that's not enough. If you go, I go down to my pages, I can see that there is an A. I go back to my A master and then I select my A and then I go to type, insert special character, markers and current page number 
And when I do that, I will have a current page number for each page that I'm on. And um, that's very smart. Again, if later uh, I have text and images and I all of a sudden think that it could be interesting with a different type um, or size, I can again go in and I can make it bigger if I want to. And I can change the color if I want to um, up here. And then you can see that all the pages have the same size and the same color. The last thing I want to show you in this video is how to place some text into my document. And to begin with, I can just drag again my rectangle tool and then I can copy some text from somewhere in a document and just place it inside. But I can also say Command D for place and then select the text that I have and say open and thereby all my text fills into my text field. As you can see, I had uh, or maybe you can't see that, but actually I have a lot more text in the text field than is visible right here. And InDesign notices this or shows me this by creating a little plus, red plus sign down here saying there's too much text for this, as you have overflow of text. So to make the text flow uh, onto the next page or the next column, I just click on the little plus sign and then I click again somewhere on the page to be able to fill in um, the text in the next column like this. And um, I can do that continuously. I still have more text. So I scroll down. Actually, I can't scroll down because I was on the last page, but now I just changed the pace or the page. Um, I changed the pages and now I can put in the rest of my text on the second page like this. That's it for this video. 